Good morning, New Beginnings family, friends, and those who are tuning us with us this morning are live uh, streaming. I just want to make a couple of announcements. And uh, first of all, our offering drop off is Tuesday for those who want to drop off their their offering here at the church, nine to twelve. That's Tuesday, nine to twelve. Uh, also, our small groups. Uh, don't forget to uh, call in or let us know if you're interested in being part of our small group ministry. Also, our church meeting that was scheduled for December 9th, we're now scheduled for December the 16th at 7 p.m. That's a Wednesday, uh, if the uh, lockdown is lifted. And also, we want you to pray. Pray for the vision, for the vision here at New Beginnings, and for the leadership and for a new leader. Let us pray. Our Lord and our God, we thank you for this privilege we have this morning of worshiping you, of celebrating your love, your grace, and your power, and your majesty. We pray that all those who are listening in will receive a blessing and that you will bless this message that I am going to deliver. And may your spirit guide us through all of it. We ask it all in your precious and wonderful name. In the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Our scriptural lesson this morning will be found in the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel 37, verses 1 through 15. And I'm going to be speaking on the topic, Making a Comeback. Making a Comeback. And it reached thus, the valley of dry bones. It said, I felt the powerful presence of the Lord. And the Spirit took me and set me down in a valley where the ground was covered with bones. He led me all around the valley. And I could see that there were very many bones and that, were very, and that they were very dry. The Lord said to me, mortal man, can these bones come back to life? I replied, sovereign Lord, only you can answer that. He said, prophesy to the bones. Tell these dry bones to listen to the word of the Lord. Tell them that I, the sovereign Lord, I am saying to them, I'm going to put breath into you and bring you back to life. I will give you sinew and muscle and cover you with skin. I will breath into you and bring you back to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied, Ezekiel said, as I had been told. While I was speaking, he said, I heard a rattling noise, and the bones began to join together. While I was watching, the bones were covered with sinew and muscle, and then with skin. But there was still no breath in the bodies. God said to me, mortal man, prophesy to the wind. Tell the wind that the sovereign Lord commands it to come from every direction to breathe into these dead bones and to bring them back to life. And so I prophesied as I had been told and breathed into the bodies and they came to life and stood up. There were enough of them to form an army. God said to me, mortal man, the people of Israel are like these bones. They say that they, have, they are dried up without hope, with no future. So prophesy to my people Israel, and tell them that I, the sovereign Lord, I'm going to open their graves. I'm going to take them out and bring them back to their land. When I open the graves where my people are buried and bring them out, they will know that I am the Lord. I will put my breath on them and bring them back to life and let them live in their own land. And they will know that I am the Lord. I have promised that I would do this. And I will, I the Lord, have spoken. Amen. Making a comeback. Uh, two boxers, Mike Tyson and Roy Jones, fought last night. Making a comeback, trying to go back to their glory days. I think it was more of a come down than a come back. But this is a question that people are asking throughout the world during the pandemic. Will things come back to normal? Can we make a camp come back? When will my uh, life come back? When will my 
job get back to normal? Where did my family get back to normal? Where did my marriage get back to normal? When did my church get back to normal? Can we make a comeback? Well, there's three requirements needed to make a comeback. Number one, we must believe, have hope and confidence in the Lord and our God, and Jesus, that he is able to give us a comeback. Two, we must obey the word of the Lord. Three, we must receive his spirit, the breath of life, and walk in it. Someone has said there's no hopeless situations. Only those who've grown hopeless about them. No hopeless situation. Only folks who've grown hopeless about them. All things are possible with God. All things only believe. In the text, the story of the dry bones is that the Israelites, the Israel, the people of Israel had failed in their failure to obey the Lord and, and do what he wanted. They were led off into captivity. They lost their home. They lost their homeland. They lost their faith. They lost their tradition. They lost their freedom. They became slaves, poverty, abuse, neglected, outcast. And so God, in his love and his wisdom, called his uh, Ezekiel, one of his faithful me messengers, commissioned him to go and to, and, to, and to speak and deliver a message to the Israelites, that he was going to give them back hope. He was going to return them to the land. He was going to give them back their life. They were going to make a comeback. And so to demonstrate to Ezekiel this power, this ability, he said he was led out by the Spirit into a valley filled with dry bones, skeletons, remains of dead people. And so God said to Ezekiel, Ezekiel, I want you to preach to these dry bones, these skeletons. And Ezekiel said, say what? Do what? To whom? To said, to the bones. I want you to preach to these bones. And I want you to tell them that I forgive them. I'm going to bring them back. I'm going to restore them. I'm going to revive them. I'm going to renew. They're going to have a comeback. I remember a couple of weeks ago I was preaching and I, I mentioned this, that faith comes by hearing. A revival, renewal, life comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. But how can they hear without a preacher? And how can they preach? How can we preach? unless we have been sent. And so God sends his faithful messenger to deliver his message that he can bring renewal and revival. Now it says they may live again. And so there was life in this village, once life in this valley. There was children playing and laughter with birds singing in the trees. There was weddings and parties and celebrations. And life was as normal. But they died. They all died. And so the question that God asks Ezekiel is this. Can these dead people live again? Can these dry bones come back to life? Can they make a comeback? And Ezekiel was no dummy. He's a pastor. So he understands. He understands the Lord. And so he says, well, whatever answer I give here, you're going to get me into trouble. And so he sort of, he saw a slip the punch. He sidesteps. He says, well, Lord, you tell me. You know the answer. Can they live again? And he said, if I say no, then God will say, well, you little faith. Did I not pack, pass, pack the seas? Did I not uh, deliver Daniel from the lion's den? Don't you believe? And if I say uh, yes, then the Lord will say, oh, you know everything. Then. You know what I'm going to do. You know how I'm going to do it. So he said, I don't know. Lord, you tell me. Sometimes we're like that. We get a hit of God. He gives a vision. But many times when God gives a vision, he doesn't give us the whole roadmap. He gives us an idea of what he wants. But sometimes, thinking we know, we're running ahead of God. We think we know what to do, how to do it, just what God wants us to do. And many times, no, we have to wait upon him. Say, Lord, you know, you show us. Not my way. Lean not to your own understanding, but all your ways and acknowledge him and let him direct your path. And so anyway, he said to the Ezekiel, go preach to these dry bones. And Ezekiel said, well, what am I going to preach? What am I going to say to them? He said, tell them how I'm going to forgive them. Tell them why I'm going to forgive them. Tell them to believe. 
Tell them to obey. Tell them to receive my spirit. And so he seek him when he began to preach to these dry bones. And he said, Hear, O Israel, your God is one God. And this God so loved the world, your God so loved the world, that he gave his only big son, Jesus Christ. This Jesus lived a perfect life. He died a perfect death. And he made him a perfect sacrifice for your sins. And then he rose up, he said, with a perfect resurrection on the third day. It was victory over sin, victory over death, victory over the grave. And not only did he rise up from the dead, he said, now he descended back into hell, where he took away the power of Satan, took the keys of Satan, and he set, he set the captive free, those who were held captive, even Satan at that time, in, in, the, in, in the hell at that time. And then he said he ascended into heaven, where he sits on the right hand side of the Father and he gives gifts, the power of the Holy Spirit to those who believe. Life, anointing, a comeback to those who believe. All who believe, all who repent of their sins, who are baptized, all who receive the Holy Spirit, he says, you will live again, you will have a comeback. The Seagull said, well now that's great preaching. That's great preaching. And so as he was preaching this message, to these dry bones. He heard a rattling, a noise happening. And as he looked down into the valley, he seen that the bones were coming together. The toe bone was being connected to the foot bone. The foot bone was coming connected to the ankle bone. The ankle bone became connected to the leg bone. The leg bone became connected to the thigh bone. The thigh bone became connected to the back bone. And the back bone became connected to the neck bone. The neck bone became connected to the hip bone. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The power of God. He deserves our praise. He can do all things. There's nothing impossible with him. As all these bones came together, then he says he put, he put the skin on the muscle and sinew. But although they were laying there looking alive and human, they weren't alive. Still did. Mannequins, so to speak. It's like when you go to a funeral home and you've uh, Look at the remains at a funeral home. They look alive. Well, they're dressed and groomed, but they're dead. Although people go to a funeral home, they say, well, don't they look good? Well, I don't know, eh? Anything good about looking about a dead person. Although I did have a friend one time that when I went to see him, his remains, he looked better dead than he did living. He lived a rough life. And they fixed him up. And he looked a lot better, a lot healthier, laying in the castle than he did when he was walking around. Well, like church, and like some of us, Jesus says, we have a form of righteousness, but no power. We look like we're alive. We have the trappings of life. We're dressed up, looking good. We have the church, we may have the steeple, we may have all the, all, all the trimmings, we may say all the right things, but he says there's no power, no vision, no victory. No healing, no joy, no peace, no growth, no baptism. We have a form of righteousness, but no power. We're like the dead bones. We need to come back. Jesus says, how do I compare the people of this day? You have ears, he said, but you do not hear. You have eyes, but you don't see. You have ears, but you're not really hearing what I'm saying. You have eyes, but you're not really comprehending what's going on around you and in your world. And Jesus said, we play, if we pray, we play a funeral music to you, you dance, you celebrate. When we pray, play party music for you, you mourn. He said, you're upside down, you're backwards. You're not getting it right. You need renewal. You need a new awakening. Well, here we have the bones that came together. He said, a whole lot of shaking going on, a lot of shake, rattle, and roll. They came together. They shook the devil up. But they were not alive. And you see yourself, well, Lord, that, that's the best I can do. That's the best preaching I can do. What do we do now? So the Lord responded to the seeker, but now I want you to go and to preach to the wind. Say what? He said, preach to the wind. To the wind. Yes, I want you, he said, to preach to the wind. Remember that Jesus, when he talks about the wind, he talks about the Holy Spirit. He appears the Holy Spirit many times to the wind. When he talks to Nicodemus, he said, well, the spirit is like the wind. You can't see it, 
You don't know where it's coming from, but he says you can only tell where it's here or by its effect it has on things. That it blows things around, that it blows the leaves on the trees. And so you can't see the spirit, but we know it's present by its effect that it has. And then we, we talk, read about the upper room, when the disciples were in the upper room. He said, a, a, a mighty rushing wind came upon them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. So the reference, even here in the text, is the guy to the Holy Spirit. So Ezekiel said, but preach to the wind, but Lord, we all know that the wind does not listen. The wind does what it does. It do what it do, as we say. But the Lord said, you go and preach to them, as I command you. So he seek and preach to the wind. He says, wind, do you hear me? I'm a prophet of the Most High God, your creator, and he has commanded me to tell you to breathe life over these dead bodies, to let the wind blow from all directions and breathe life on these bodies. And as he seek again with preaching, behold, a slight breeze come upon him, on his face. And all of a sudden, a rushing muddy wind blew over him and blew over the bodies. And as this wind was blowing his over them, they stood up, they stood up, they stood up, praise the Lord, kill my hand. If you're sitting on your coach, get off it. Stood up, stand up, and praise God. If you're in your bed, get out. Stand up, praise the Lord. They stood up, a muddy army. Our God specializes in things that are impossible. He does the things other gods or others cannot do. He and he alone can allow us to have a comeback. But if somebody says, we only hear the word, we dry it. If we only talk about the Spirit, we may blow up. But when we hear the word, obey the word, and receive the Spirit, we grow up. We stand up as a muddy army, able to go forward and claim the kingdom in Jesus' name. In the paper this week, a, a bishop had wrote, written in the, in the Chronicle Herald, he said that the Christian faith and church is in a downward trend. A downward trend. So there's less people going into the ministries. There's less people sitting in the pews. There's less people receiving Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Why is this? Because we're living in the past. We're trying to maintain the past. We're trying to hold on to the past. We're trying to recreate the past. But it's in the past. It no longer exists. God is doing a new thing. God is doing a new thing in the land. God is doing a new thing in the nation. God is doing a new thing in the church. God is doing a new thing in the life of the believer. Hallelujah. A new thing. A new thing. After COVID, there's going to be a new thing. We don't know just what it is, but we can be sure it's going to be a new thing. It's not going to be, if we say, the new normal. We don't know what it is. We don't know what it'll be in the faith, but it'll be in the church, but it'll be a new thing. We have to be prepared. Jesus came as a new thing when the Jewish church was failing, wasn't doing, carrying out the responsibility, the commission that God wanted it to. He sent Christ. He was a new thing. Now we don't need a new Messiah. We don't need a new Savior. We don't need a new uh, uh, a message. We have it. We have Jesus. We have the truth. We don't need a new mission to reach out, seek and save those who are lost, and minister to the, to the hurting, to the trouble, to the lost. To the needy. But we may need a new method. We may need a new vehicle, a new car to deliver this message. We need to catch the new wind. We need to catch the wind that's blowing this direction that God wants us to go in. We need to make a comeback. We need to stand up as a people. Let's stand up as a church. Stand up as a faith. Stand up for justice. Stand up for the justice of those who are less most vulnerable among us. Stand up for the justice of those who are color, who are being uh, racially discriminated against, or uh, the bigots that is going on. But we need to stand up for justice. We need to stand up for righteousness. We need to stand up for holiness. Stand up and be counted. Go out, seeking to save those who are lost, the minister to the hurting. 
to feed the hungry, to heal the sick, to mend the brokenhearted. We need to stand up. We need to stand up for Jesus. Stand up, stand up, and since Jesus, you soldiers of the cross, it's time for us to stand up. As the Apostle Paul says, I am not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed to live the gospel, or preach the gospel, or talk the gospel, or preach the gospel. I'm not ashamed of it because it is the power of God unto salvation. It is the power of God unto our combat. Getting up for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. And maybe you're here this morning, or you're listening in this morning, I should say. You need to come back. You need renewal. You need recovery. You need hope. You need renewal in your family. You need renewal in your life. Renewal, renewal in your marriage. Renewal in your ministry. You need renewal. Well, you need to believe the word of Jesus Christ, the teachings. You need to receive the teaching of the word of Jesus Christ. You need to obey that word. If we believe, obey, and receive, it says, we will have a comeback. We will have an anointing. We will have a renewal. We will be born again. We will be revived. This is my people who are called by my name, believe as Christians, would humble themselves, repent of their sins. I would hear their prayers. I would heal their land. Amen.